are your names, please? Matthew Asner. Nathan Lamb. Michael Lamb. And what are the Lamb's connections? Uh, that's my father. He's my son. I'm actually Nate's Ill illegitimate son. <laughs> <laughs> That his father Ed wanted me to take. I feel first, like so. I I feel like I'm Nate's son. Son, you should. <laughs> I've adopted you. But he has a wonderful father. That's right. I do. What's your profession? I am the cantor of Stephen S. Wise Temple, and uh, a voice teacher and a dean of, a, of the Academy for Jewish Religion, California, and a movie producer. <laughs> a movie producer. And a record producer. <laughs> And what did you do with this film, 100 Voices, yourself? I, I'm, uh, I'm, the I'm, a I'm one of the directors and also a producer and a writer. Um, and for 100 Voices, I'm one of the producers and a co-writer of the film. Okay. Why is this film important for the general public to see? Uh, Nate, you want to handle that one? And then we'll maybe I'll have a go. <laughs> the film is about reconciliation. The film is about acceptance of the fact that we're all brothers. It's a paradigm shift from what we had 65 years ago. Here we are a world 65 years ago where the Jews and the Poles had a different narrative they were telling. Jews lived in Poland for 1,000 years. And so here, if we look back 65 years ahead and look back, maybe some of the people who aren't talking now, maybe it's a paradigm shift will happen where we look back and we can also be in dialogue and, and feel as if we are brothers and sisters to those who are now our enemy or those who we perceive as being enemies. That's one of them. The second important thing is to see that John Paul II, a man of goodwill, a, gr a great man, the head of the Catholic Church, extended his hand to the Jewish people and when he went to the Western Wall and put a prayer in there, that was an invitation for the Jewish people to accept actually a, uh, a repentive moment in the way that uh, the church had dealt with the Jews over 2,000 years. How much more so for us to accept his hand in friendship. So it's not a really about a Jewish, Catholic, Jewish, Christian film. It's a film about how people deal with their own narratives and listening to the other person's narrative. And so the film has a universal appeal based upon that. Plus we deal with music, and music is the, is the vehicle. Music is the conduit for which we try to tell this story. And I'll add a third. Uh, when we began making this film, and it became apparent, very apparent as soon as we set ground on, uh, on Polish soil, uh, that this film had to be about life, not about death. So everything about this film is about life and about what once was, the life that once was, and how it still exists in the people in the film, and how and they captured it so well uh, on the Warsaw stage. Uh, the Opera House stage. And I also think that in terms of, of what it means in terms of, of how Jews perceive uh, Poland, um, I think it shows that it's a much more complex relationship than we wanted to see it as sort of a black and white, as sort of a, it's a very anti-Semitic place where the truth of the matter is, is that um, there are a lot of degrees within there. I think that there, the thing that I sort of learned in the, in the, in the process in, in leading up to this film was that, that was, is there anti-Semitism there? Of course there is. Um, but there is a segment of the population at, at that time that was really interested in, in helping save its Jewish population. Um, and I think now that there's a segment of the population that's interested in, in helping preserve that and help bring it back. And I think that that's, that's part of what makes it interesting. I think that's, that, that Janusz isn't just one individual story. I think he's a representative of a, of a segment of, of the Polish population that, that that does feel that loss, and that I think that um, I think for the Jewish population, it's it's I think it's important for us to see that we can't lump it all in and say that 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 it's that there's only one way to perceive Poland in our in our relationship to it. What what would that that first way be? The first way I think is to say that that is a blanket statement that that Poland is an anti-Semitic place. Um, I think we have to see that there's there's a there are there are varying degrees just like in any society that there are there is there's a certain level of, of any sort of hatred 
in general, and that, and that there's there's not one there's not one way to look at it. It's not it's not just a clear black and white picture of you know that it was just. And there, there's an attempt in Poland, or not an attempt. They are doing it with the with this new museum they're putting of the history of the Polish Jews in Warsaw, it's funded by the government. Uh, to say that uh, the thousand years of Jewish history are very important. And it were the Poles who welcomed the Jews in during the Crusades. In the 14th century, the Poles welcomed them in. And the Jews were there for numbers of years uh, and succeeding. And in terms of academic pursuits and the things that happened to the Jewish people in Poland, uh, it, it gave, it was the cradle of this music that we showed in this film. And today's modern Poland is one of Israel's best allies, if not its best ally in the European community. And the dialogue, and they are aggressively, aggressively pursuing this dialogue so that they confront their anti-Semitism of the past and in the future teach their children and, and teach their generations yet to come that that led to nothing for Poland and led to nothing good for anyone. And so I give them a lot of credit for what's for what's in store for them. So the film deals with that and we try to tell the narrative sometimes from their side as well. Uh, well, I, I think one of the things, and it was really your one of your biggest intents, and I, I um, was that I think us as, as as Jews, in a lot of ways, we look at something and say, look at all the things that they didn't do to to help, um, and sort of we lumped it in and say, oh, you know, it was it was, uh, you know, the the poles were were just as com you know as complicit in, in all of it. And, and the, the truth of the matter is, instead of saying, look at all the people that didn't do things, let's honor the people um, and, and praise the people that actually did do something, that took the, took the risk. And, and I, you know, I had a chance in the, in the last couple of years to meet some of the, the relatives of, of some righteous Gentiles. And when you tell them, you say, you know, you say, oh, you're, 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 your grandparents or your parents, they were heroes. And they, th their response, and from every single one of them that I've met thus far, has said, they're not heroes. They don't, they don't feel themselves as heroes. They felt like they did what any normal human being should have done at that period of time. But, but, but the most important thing about this film, I, I, I really believe, is, is, the, is the recapturing the, uh, of one's roots, uh, the, the, uh, the search for one's, you know, essence. And I, I think, you know, everyone on the stage at the Warsaw Opera House was reconnecting with their past. And, and to, to, you know, to me, you know, there's no greater feeling of power than, than being one with your ancestors. And, and I think uh, they all had that. Including, uh, interesting you just said that, including the orchestra yeah. and the singers. When they were singing Charles Fox's piece, you could feel that here they were in this opera house, the largest stage in, in, in Europe with a hundred piece orchestra and a hundred voice choir singing the words of their icon, the greatest icon that Poland has produced, Chopin and John Paul II, yeah. and they're singing those words written by a Jewish composer whose family came from Poland with a hundred cantors, 72 cantors in the audience with a group and all of them doing this because it is a Polish experience and a Jewish experience and not to be yeah. bifurcated. The interest for all of us was there. That's a fan that's Absolutely. a fantastic thing. People walked away. So just to give you one, maybe one last idea here, from this film has come many different things. Charles was asked to do the two hundredth birthday of Frederick Chopin. He was commissioned to do the music. It played before he probably told you twenty two thousand people in Gdansk this last August. I just received a phone call from the American Embassy in Lithuania that in Vilnius, they also want to commemorate the fact of the Jewish contribution. Vilna was part of the Polish Empire, but they want to commemorate the loss that they feel for the Jews that they had there. Vilna was the Jerusalem. Vilna was the center of Jewish, Jewish academic pursuits. And now they want us to come back there and do something similar this coming summer to commemorate that. So this dialogue... And show and the in, film there. And show the film there. And in Germany, so we're working on Germany in 2012. These are, so from this film has come a tremendous amount of discussion and has changed the landscape and the timbre of that discussion. So we're pretty, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty happy that we did something that has some value and will change human behavior, we think, in little teeny, in a little small way. But nonetheless, if people can get along better, that's, that's what it's about. Okay.